When Jesus came and He modeled what freedom and deliverance and everything looked like, He was actually representing the Father. Yeah, you guys can be seated if you would like. And He said, I came to reveal the Father, the heart of the Father. So we know that heaven is into healing. We know that heaven and the Father is into setting people free. It is the desire of God for us to have breakthrough. It's not just an idea, it's not a theory. And Jesus modeled it and He showed us. So when He gave us the Holy Spirit and He gave us power and He gave us love, when we're doing this thing, we are bringing heaven to earth. We are continuing the ministry of Jesus because He sent us out to all the ends of the world. And out of our, the Great Commission and being obedient to Jesus, I'd never seen this before, growing up in church, growing up in religion and legalism, where you're just told how rubbish you are, all your mistakes, the condemnation. I'd seen pastors stand people up in the middle of service and shame them publicly. And just thinking to myself, good grief, this cannot be the God that I read about in the Bible. This cannot be. And to come into a house that showed us that you don't just have to read about it, you can be about it. So I'm grateful to our lead pastors, Jürgen and Leanne, for modeling, for discipling, for coaching, being secure enough as leaders to bring in other people that operate powerfully to show us how to disciple us and, and coach us through this thing. And so when we do this, it is the continuation of what Jesus came to do on this earth. But the kingdom of heaven also comes to reveal a thing. Because the Bible teaches us that there's conflict in the spirit realm. So when we come against things in the spirit realm, there might be a bit of a reaction. There might be some things that bubble up. When we carry His power and authority, suddenly people start feeling a little bit nauseous, a little bit sick. Uh, suddenly they have headaches or there's tightness around their mind. Can I tell you, that's not you. That's not normal. When we start talking about the Holy Spirit and power and freedom and deliverance, and all of a sudden, out of nowhere, you start feeling these things. Can I just tell you, there's a kingdom of heaven and there's a kingdom of darkness. And I've wrestled with that kingdom of darkness and it does not want you to be set free. It wants you, it wants everything, it is all consuming and it will literally try to kill you. But Christ came to give us life and life abundantly. It is for freedom that Christ came to set us free, amen? So if you're feeling a bit agitated, you're feeling a bit unsettled, don't worry, you're gonna be okay. You're gonna get set free tonight. We all have some friends that we've had that we wanted to get rid of. We're gonna get rid of some friends for you tonight. Just think of us as like bouncers, right? We're gonna kick them out. I had people do that for me when I didn't know how to. And now I get to tell the same demons that tormented me to go from somebody. This is a huge part of the gospel. And it's not just about the pastors that can do it. We've all been empowered to do it. And scripture says, hey, when you preach the gospel, confirm it with miracle signs and wonders. So yes, we are a word church, but we're also a supernatural church. Amen. Okay, quickly, last weekend we had the amazing Pastor Shelley Griever come through. Incredible message. She talked about some things, what we call doorways. And to quickly recap, she talked about unforgiveness and bitterness. And this is the first topic I wanted to talk about. Unforgiveness or forgiving people and getting rid of bitterness is the first step to freedom. We're gonna do a couple of altar calls here tonight. But the first one I wanna to do tonight, or altar call, is for towards unforgiveness and bitterness and unforgiveness towards yourself. And something not very popular, not really spoken about is if you have unforgiveness or resentment towards God. Disappointment, discouragement, prayers weren't answered. I've just found that all freedom begins with forgiveness. Forgiving those that have wronged you even though they don't deserve it, it's not for them. Forgiving those that have hurt you, slandered you, gossiped about you, betrayed you. It is a powerful 
powerful first step to freedom. Because unforgiveness leads into what we call bitterness. And we don't want a bitter root to come in and take, to establish itself. There was a woman in the Bible bent over at the waist. She couldn't stand up. And the spirit of bitterness was cast out of her. And the Bible actually says that she used to drink from the waters of Mara. And Mara means bitterness. So whatever we're drinking from will feed unforgiveness, will feed bitterness, will keep us in angst and anger and hatred. I lived that life. It is a lonely place. In fact, in 2020, I'd spent a year building a business, building a team, running a business in 35 states. We were crushing it. It was amazing, it was fun. First time I'd ever been given an operation to be a, a VP over. It was amazing, we were having a great time. And then COVID happened and everything shut down. So finances are affected. This thing that we had so much fun building so was seemingly felt like it was taken away. Disappointment, discouragement, praying to God, God, what the flip is going on here? Then I was getting angry at political leaders. It was their fault. They shut the country down. They did this. We could have stayed open. Started getting angry at different people in my life. Started manifesting. Then I was getting angry at my leaders here in the church and poor Matt and Michaela asked me a question one night and I was like, ah! Spiegel. You can tell this thing has its claws in you when all of a sudden your anger is a little bit explosive. It's like, it just came out of nowhere. I don't know what happened. Something came over me. That means we've given this thing legal ground to operate and almost fester like a sore. So I'm dealing with the sense of loss around this business, the disappointment, this discouragement. I'm watching my savings go out the door. Three months later, my mom gets suddenly sick out of the blue, healthy, 70 year old, went to the hospital, came home, misdiagnosed, died. I'm grieving my work. I'm grieving this thing that's been taken away. Now my mother is suddenly gone. Can you imagine the compound effect of now I'm blaming nurses and doctors and mal I'm talking malpractice lawsuits. I'm talking about legal action to, rec to try and reconcile or something. and to go through this process. And to be honest, I went through it a little bit too long because I knew better after being here a while. I just coming before God going, God, I don't understand. I don't know why these things have happened, but I know you work all things together for good for those that love you. I know that the enemy is trying to come and take me out because in that season, I'd even entertained leaving ministry. I'd entertained, just leaving it all, quitting, moving, doing something. I just couldn't, didn't want to be around anymore. Yeah, I was getting wise counsel. I was getting ministry, but there's a process. And when you recognize that there's process in brokenheartedness after the forgiveness, there is healing. See, we can get so stoic and be like, yeah, yeah, I forgave them. Yeah, I forgave them. I've moved on. Yeah, probably not. So let's say Dr. Matt lends one of my pens and he breaks it. And he tells me, oh, dude, I'm so sorry. I broke your pen. I'll be like, no sweat. That has very little weight in my life. But if he says, hey, can I borrow your house for a week? Yeah, sure. Borrows my house for a week. Three days later, he calls me. He's like, dude craziest thing happened. <laughs> Things got a little cray cray and your house burned down. That has a different weight to it. And I have to recognize that certain offenses, certain betrayals, certain wounds have a different weight, a different impact. They have a different effect. They're not all the same. And once I recognize that this has had an impact on me, I can be like, God, oh my gosh, this has affected me more than I realize. It's changed my filter on people. Now I have negative 
perceptions on, on outcomes, on conversations, on people. I prejudge things before they happen. It's just this toxicity. So if I don't recognize the level of impact that it's had on my life and acknowledge that it's done something, and if I don't bring it before the Lord and acknowledge that these things have done something, yes, I've forgiven, but I will still be bound up in heartache and heartbreak and afflicted and tormented by the events that have happened. So when I came to my senses, not understanding why these things have happened, coming before God and surrendering and actually allowing ourselves to grieve. I got very busy very quickly because there was a thousand things going on with, with church ministry. You know, hello, it's COVID season, everybody's losing their minds. Got very busy very quickly and I just covered it up. Didn't, didn't mean to do it. But realizing, oh my gosh, I haven't dealt with this properly. I'd forgiven the doctors, I'd forgiven the people all involved, I'd released them to God. But I hadn't dealt with the heart issue. And God is a God that heals the brokenhearted and binds up their wounds. Amen? All right. That was a process. But we, I came before God almost daily. And healing happened, and healing happened, and healing happened. I can tell you with certainty and confidence, I'm 100% free from the grief and the trauma and the disappointment and the discouragement that happened in 2020. So I want to ask you to do some inventory right now. If you've been wronged, if you've been betrayed, if you've been wounded and hurt by people, because hurt people hurt people. If you feel disappointed and discouraged and you have resentment or unforgiveness towards God even. Or if you've done something yourself and you highly regret it and you're very hard on yourself and you can't forgive yourself. This first altar call that we're going to do is for you. The worship team's gonna play. We've got this wonderful, huge open space right here. I'm gonna invite you to come down and we're gonna pray a prayer together to start your journey in freedom from bitterness, from unforgiveness towards any anger or hatred. Jesus actually commands us to release people, to forgive. So we're in alignment with Him, we're being obedient to Him, but more importantly, we're gonna bring about freedom to your life. You will see a change in your relationships, you will see a change in your work, you will see a change, and you will see how this thing affected every or infected every single area of your life. So the worship team's gonna play. We're gonna have people come down. I'm gonna lead you through a prayer. Our ministry team's gonna come up and we're gonna lay hands and declare and believe that this thing is broken, that you are free, that you'll no longer be tormented, and you'll know that you're free because suddenly you'll feel lighter. When you think of that person, they come to your mind, you're not all of a sudden angry or acidic or toxic or you can think about that person and be at peace so there will be peace and joy levity this is what it talks about in Romans yes it is real yes you can have it we're going to pray over these things and then as the spirit leads we're going to have a couple more altar calls but I want you to know that God loves you and yes, there is an enemy that is trying to bind you and keep you bound so that you cannot step into your full destiny and calling that God has called you to. And my life is a testament of this. I want to encourage you, don't be afraid. If we can't trust God with our own hearts, who can we trust? Amen. Amen. I'm going to have everybody stand. If you felt like this was speaking to you, I want you to come down right now. Don't be afraid. If there's a voice telling you, don't go down. Don't embarrass yourself. Just shut that voice down right now. You can command it to be silent. Beautiful. Beautiful.
amazing. We just give people a few more seconds to come down. We're going to pray. I'll have you repeat a prayer after me. And when the ministers come by, this is very important. I want you to be quiet when they come by and lay hands on you because I want you to receive. I would encourage you, this is not a time to nurse and rehearse the pain and because once we've prayed this corporate prayer, we're going to believe that it is finished. It is done and we're going to come with power and a power encounter so that you have an impartation of the Holy Ghost and freedom. So if you guys could close your eyes and turn your palms up to heaven. Position your hearts to receive from the Father. Open up your hearts to Him, for He loves you. He cares for you deeply, deeply. His Son, Jesus Christ, poured out His precious blood for you and your wife. And He didn't do it all for nothing. So if you, as you turn your palms up to heaven, I want you to picture the people, recall their names, picture the people that have deeply wounded you or hurt you. It's okay if you start crying. That means the Holy Spirit's doing something. repeat after me. Say in the name of Jesus, I renounce all agreements with bitterness, with bitter judgments, with unforgiveness. I break it now. I renounce all these agreements to these people that have hurt me, that have wounded me, that have abandoned me or betrayed me. Father, I release them to you. I surrender every hurt, every pain to you now. I command every spirit of torment and affliction that came in on unforgiveness and bitterness, I command you to go from my life now in Jesus name father I forgive those that hurt me thank you for forgiving me of all my sins all my shame and everything that I've done that would break your heart thank you Holy Spirit for coming now healing me filling me and restoring me in Jesus name amen all right ministry team if you could just walk through go through the crowd start laying hands on people and believing for breakthrough now for healing now for restoration now Lord bless you and keep you make his face shine upon
Thanks for listening. To find out more about our locations, team, and what we do here at Awakened Church, go to awakenedchurch.com.